Okay, welcome, welcome. We're going to talk about concept 106, applies to both SAT and ACT. So there is an equivalent ACT 106 packet. Um, on each test, you'll get about maybe four questions or so that will test you on verbs. If you're being tested on verbs, there are two things you care about. You care about whether or not the verb uh, agrees with the subject. And the second thing is you care about the verb tense. But here's how I would actually process it. And here's the most important thing. If you see that you're being tested on a verb, four out of five times, if you can just track down your subject, if you can just figure out what the verb is referring back to, whether it's a singular subject or a plural subject, if it's singular, obviously your verb conjugation has to be singular. Plural, then your verb conjugation has to be plural. But if you can figure out what the subject is, what your verb is referring back to, four out of five times, that's all you need. You don't even have to go any further. That will get you the question. So the way you almost want to think is the minute you get a question that you know it's a verb question, you're just saying, what's my subject? What's my subject? Let me find my subject. If that's not enough, on the rare occasion that that's not enough, then you look at the tense. But you really don't even need to consider what tense you're in until you're able to determine that having the subject just isn't enough. So the test will try to pull three different tricks on you. I, I'd call it, I don't know if I'd call them tricks, but there are three things you're going to try to get by you or use to confuse you when it comes to figuring out what your subject is. Well, I guess I, I should call them tricks because that's how I've labeled it here. So, all right, we'll call them tricks. Anyway, first thing that they're going to use to throw you off the scent of your subject is the test is going to try to bombard you with prepositional phrases and participle phrases. I'll show you exactly what I mean. And let's kind of uh, zoom in a little bit. So your subject here is the team. It says the team of politicians working around the clock with their assistance fail to find a compromise on leaving the EU. All right, always changing colors, right? So anyway, if you look at this, of is a preposition. Politicians is the object of your preposition. So it's not the subject. It answers what the of is asking. So of what? And then you have an object. So a prepositional phrase, which is a preposition and the object of your preposition, that's never going to determine how the verb is conjugated because it's not your subject. It's just a prepositional phrase. The next thing you have right after the prepositional phrase is you have a participle phrase working around the clock. Again, that's just a descriptor. All of this is, so of politicians is describing team. Working around the clock is just describing the politicians with their assistance is just, again, describing the politicians, another prepositional phrase. So we've got a prep phrase, another prep phrase, a participle phrase. All of this is noise. When it comes down to it, it's a matter of who or what is failing to find a compromise. Your subject is the team. So the team fail? No, team is singular. So the verb conjugation has to be singular. So it's the team fails. Interestingly enough, the singular conjugation of a verb in the present te tense is one with an S. So the team fails. Obviously, if you use I or you, it's I or you fail. That's the only strange bit. But whenever it's it, he, she, whatever the thing is, it's the thing fails. So most of the singular present tense is just S. And you can kind of hear it on your ear. But the biggest thing you have to figure out the minute you know it's a verb question is you have to track down your subject, ignoring prepositional phrases and participle phrases because you're not going to find your subject in there. So it's good to know that those are just descriptors. Okay, second trick that the test will try. They're going to put a whole lot of non-essential junk, and you've learned this on worksheet 102, what a parenthetical phrase is, but they're going to put parenthetical phrases or blurbs between your subject and your verb. And you just need to know to ignore the parenthetical stuff because anything that is parenthetical or non-essential uh, is not going to be your subject because your subject is an essential part of your sentence. So let's look at this one. 
the historian who researches Margaret Thatcher, comma, a polarizing figure who had her supporters and detractors, comma, yearned to know more about this leader. Well, our subject is really the historian. So it's the historian yearns. A polarizing figure, the part between the two commas is all junk. So the minute you know that you're being tested on subject verb agreement, you know to ignore any uh, thing offset by two commas or dashes, anything that's non-essential. Um, a couple quick hitters for you. So the first quick hitter is, uh, I guess I'd call it trick number three, but the first quick hitter is all of these words, you wouldn't think everybody would be singular, but it's everybody is. Anyone is. Everyone is. This whole list of words, they're all singular. Guess what else is singular? A gerund. A gerund is when you use an ing as your noun. So I would say swimming is great exercise. Biking is fun. Speaking is scary. So swimming is. So gerunds are also singular. So just some, something to be aware of. Okay. So like I said, four out of five times, you just need to figure out your subject. If you figure out your subject, you'll know how to conjugate your verb. Uh, for the times that that's not enough, we need to figure out verb tense. Well, there are really only two verb tenses that tend to trip people up on the test. It's past and present perfect tense. It, the verbs had, has, and have tend to give students fits. But there's no need for it to continue to be this way. Had is past perfect. What does that mean? It means something started in the past, was ongoing in the past, but something else came after it in the past and terminated it before it made it to the present. Here are two examples. Sandra had planned to ski over winter break until she broke her leg. So this was ongoing in the past, but something else happens after it in the past, the breaking of the leg, and it doesn't make it to the present. Lionel had eaten lunch already, so he declined the sandwich. So Lionel eating lunch kind of remained continually relevant in the past, and then an action follows it in the past. No longer relevant in the present. When you're using had, has, or have, make sure that you're conjugating your verb correctly. The conjugation isn't always the same as the past tense. An example is bore versus born. Fair, bore, born. Another one, Michaela beats, Michaela beat, past tense. Michaela had or has beaten. Yeah, if you said plan, then planned is the same in both tenses. Had planned, has planned, planned. But some verbs take on a different form when they go and follow has, had, or have, the perfect tense. Okay, so present perfect. What does present perfect mean? It means that something started in the past, but instead of terminating before the present, it has made it into the present. So it's ongoing into the present. Linda has worked with toddlers on whatever it is toddlers do. So she's worked with toddlers in the past, continues to work with toddlers in the present. Chen and Simon have spoken to authorities about the suspicious behavior on the tube. So they spoke to the authorities and their raising awareness continues to remain relevant. Anyway, let's just take a look at three different verb problems from the test. We'll look at number two first. So the answer choices start here and they're also there and let me move my face out of the way. Oop. Now I'm moving my face out of the way. Okay. So as always, we care about our subject, most important. We don't even think about the tense until we've identified our subject. So let's do this problem. The importance of bees highlights the potentially disastrous effects of an emergent unexplained crisis. I'm not even going to read the rest because it's the subject is really up here and the verb is here. So your subject is, and I'll do this in a cool color, let's go with green. Your subject is the importance. Of bees is just describing the importance. It's a prepositional phrase. So the importance highlights. And then as far from worksheet 102, we know we want effects, the noun, not affects the verb. So the importance highlights. Let's look at the next problem. Again, we're hunting down our subject. A four-year study by a team of Canadian scientists, well, by a team, prepositional phrase, 
of Canadian scientists prepositional phrase headed, oh wait, offset by two commas here. So headed by the student Laura McKinnon of the University of Quebec. Well, that's just non-essential bit describing the study. So really our subject is just a study. So a study provides. Every other one is in the plural form, are, have, provide. We don't even care about the tense. Just by knowing what the subject is, we know it can only be big. Again, a lot of noise with prepositional phrases and parenthetical bits. But we know whenever it's a verb question, we just need to hunt down our subject and stay disciplined. Okay, one more verb question, and then I'll get out of your way so you can practice this worksheet. So at sunrise and sunset, a colored light display projected onto the ceiling shift from purple to blue to green to beige. The different colors surrounding the oculus make the changing shades of sunlight appear even more dramatic. Okay, so we know that it's our subject is the display. So we figured out our subject. It's the display. Projected onto the ceiling is just a participle phrase describing the display. So the display shifted, shifts, or was shifting. It's not the display shift. It would be the two things shift. So we know we can get rid of the plural answer. But we need to, actually on this one, we need to figure out the tense now. So if we look around for context, the next sentence says make. So make is in the present tense, so we know that the display shifts, okay. Anyway, that is all for this worksheet. Uh, good luck, and obviously this video and the others are all here for whenever you need them. Okay, bye.